So in general, here's what we know about polynomial functions of degree n. They will have n zeros. So whatever the degree is, that's how many zeros that we can expect to get. Now, we've mentioned this in the past that sometimes zeros show up more than once. Uh, multiplicity. We're going to see what that means in terms of the graph here in just a moment. It means that there will be, at most, n x-intercepts. Now we talked about this and we said that you only get an x-intercept if your zeros are real. So each real zero corresponds to an x-intercept. So we always have n zeros. They could be complex, they could be imaginary. So we don't necessarily know that for sure. And we're gonna have at most n x-intercepts. And then we're going to have n minus one turning points. Or less than that or less than that by a multiple of two. So real quickly, let's talk about what this means. That means that if you have a polynomial of degree five, you are going to have five zeros, some of which may be repeated, but you're gonna have five zeros. You're going to have at most five x-intercepts for the number of turning points. And a turning point is where you go from increasing to decreasing, where you turn that way, where you go from decreasing to increasing. And again, you're turning to go the other direction. The number of turning points for a polynomial of degree 5, you're going to have four turning points. Or it says less than that by a multiple of 2. That means you're going to have four turning points or two turning points, or you could have zero turning points. Okay. If you have a polynomial function of degree 4, degree 4 means you're going to have four zeros. You're going to have at most four x-intercepts. The most number of times that a polynomial function of degree 4 can cross the x-axis is four times. But the number of turning points, you will have n minus 1, so take one away. That means you're going to have three turning points, or you could have one turning point. So. Degree four, n minus one, so three turning points, or less than that by a multiple of two. So that means you take it off, take them off in pairs. So that means you would either have three turning points or one turning point. Uh, you, you can't take two off of that because then you'd have negatives. That's not gonna make sense in terms of counting. So you're guaranteed to have at least one turning point, maybe three, okay? Now, as an example, um, you see there in the notes that I wrote as an example, uh, 3x to the third minus 4x squared minus 17x plus 6. So this is a polynomial function of degree 3. So what does this mean? This means that we have three zeros. That means we have up to three x-intercepts and again the number of intercepts depends entirely on how many real zeros we have and then we're going to have this we will have either two turning points or less than that by a multiple of two so two minus two is going to be zero so here is what we know about this graph. We're going to have three zeros. We're going to have up to three intercept, x-intercepts, provided they're all real. And the number of turning points is supposed to be n minus one, so you take one away. So you're going to have two turning points, or less than that by a multiple of two, which would then become zero. And think about this. This is x to the third. So your normal x to the third graph looks like this that little cactus guy, right? Who doesn't really have any turning points? He's increasing the entire way, okay? 
So uh, think about the end behavior for this. When we want to discuss end behavior to really get an idea about what's going on in the graph, okay, we look at this. We kind of we can just kind of ignore the rest of this that's here, and say you know what let's focus on this. Okay. This is uh, x to the third, so I know my end behavior is supposed to either be cactus like this or an upside down cactus like that. Since the lead coefficient is positive, I know that my end behavior is going to be going up on the right and going down on the left. So I've already pulled up the graph for this in Desmos, so let's see how it all works out. Okay. So here in Desmos, you can see that we have one, two, three x-intercepts. We were told that we could have up to three x-intercepts, so we totally do. And each of those corresponds to a real zero. Now, we did a problem. We actually did this problem um, just before we took our second test. You also see the number of turning points marked out by these points right here. You have a turning point here and one down here. So it's at this point where you go from increasing to now decreasing. And this point down here is where the graph goes from decreasing to increasing. That's a turning point. So we said for this guy that we could have either two or zero turning points. There is no way to have just a single turning point. Because imagine if you just had one turning point. You're coming from below. If you only turn one time, then you're going to be going down, and so your end behavior is going to be going down on both ends, which does not connect back to something that has an odd degree for the polynomial. So an odd degree, you know you have to be going in opposite directions in the end, and this guy, he comes up, he turns once, he turns twice, so he can still be heading up as he goes out to the right to match up with that end behavior. Okay. Now we're going to work through a couple more examples to see if we can come up with a sketch see if we can identify the zeros and talk about you know just a rough idea about what the graph is going to look like okay